this is the official nerdy crafter not another crap kit craft kit it sounded like i said crap twice crap very exciting jackie i'm so excited for you thank you for sending me this congratulations on getting your own craft kit in collaboration with smart art thank you smart art for sending this and jackie for sending this to me i'm excited <laughs> did i say that already wait i totally blocked my face there so here's what it looks like i'm working on another project and i haven't cleaned my desk off yet oh my gosh i think i have these stickers it's so cute got a little letter there's a sloth on the back oh it's so cute it's a happy letter i do want to share from her letter that she said the first video she ever watched from me was back when i was doing polymer clay tutorials so this is a fun uh, homage is that the word I don't know what I'm trying to say it's basically like it, it's come full circle because now I am going to be working with clay from her kit whoa there's so many things we have the complete guide it shows everything that's in the kit along with a step-by-step -step picture instruction guide my hair is just all over. Jackie believes that craft kits, in order to get an A+++++ rating, <laughs> should have everything that you need to do the project. Jackie's one of the most thorough reviewers ever. Rubber bands down. So I have a lot of faith in this kit and I have no reason to believe that anything would be subpar about it i think it's going to exceed all expectations so just because i'm not giving like a full review on everything pros and cons wise i feel like there's really not gonna be cons stickers holy carp they're cute so now that we have that out of the way it's time for me to get organized and i'm gonna start getting the mold ready so I can actually create the project. Let's go ahead and set up the mold. I'm going to take the two parts and make sure that they are fully locked together at the seams. Da, 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 da. Then I'm taking these three rubber bands and one at a time I'm going to stretch them around the two sides of the mold. One at the top, one in the middle, and one. Ah. Come on, come on. At the bottom here around the feet. I am now measuring out 200 milliliters of the casting compound, aka plaster. Oh, this is heavy. <laughs> and I am going to dump that into the bowl. Then I'm going to grab some water and mix that in. a little bit smarter than I was here and make sure to pop up the bowl the entire way. Oh my gosh. There we go. I'm like, is this all gonna fit? Yeah, not like that. Okay. Ugh. Try to put it back. So this is three ounces of water that I am pouring on top of the powder. Then I'm mixing that really well with the spatula. Ooh, a little spatula. Getting around all the edges and making sure that it's a really nice consistency, not too thick. We want it to be a little bit runny-ish. This part is a little bit nerve wracking because there's only five minutes before it starts to harden and set up. It kind of resembles a feminine product. <laughs> uh, okay, oh, it's. I think it's going well. Go, go, go. Oh no, no, it's not, it's stuck in there. But it's very useful. I think it's getting clogged in the funnel. Try to do it. There we go. That's easier actually. It's going right in. I'm sure you can make the funnel work. I'm just very nervous that it's going to harden too quickly. This is my first time working with plaster, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> oh my gosh, <laughs> I'm too nervous for this. Gotta. Gently tap, kind of vibrate the mat. How far are you in there? I think it needs more. Go, go, go. It's not quite as urgent as I thought. It is after five minutes. It's probably like seven minutes now and it's still workable 
<laughs> Volcano. I really hope this works. Ugh. It's been a little bit over an hour actually. I'm going to now demold and hope for the best. Moment of truth, let the unmolding begin. Uh, okay, wait, this is because I poured, this is because I was messy when I poured, it didn't leak out. Oops, okay. That's pretty satisfying. <laughs> it would be in this one. Hey, that's not so bad. There's some little bubbles but it's mostly a solid form. Just a few minor imperfections, nothing I can't fill in or cover up with the clay. So I'd say that this is a su <laughs> So I'd say that this is a success. Also, I had a little bit of extra plaster, so I made some dinosaurs. You may have noticed the little growth coming out of its head. I used the Excel blade that comes with the kit in order to do some minor surgery and remove that. I'm cleaning up, it's really easy because all you have to do is wait for the plaster to harden and then crack it off like so, throw it away, and now we're gonna move on to the clay portion of this tutorial, I'm so excited. Yes, the clay. I'm first transforming a wad of clay into a flattened circle. Warming up the clay between the palms of your hands and gently breathing on it will give you a little bit more workability. And you can also use a pasta roller. I don't have one or a rolling pin. As you can see, I'm using that flattened piece of clay to wrap around a ball of foil. And then I'm going to attach the entire thing after I cover everything with clay. I'm gonna attach that with the Sculpey adhesive, which is the bacon bond. And yeah, now it looks like this. What a great way to explain. Here I am working on making the face look more smooth and seamless. I'm going around the big muzzle piece that I added with smaller pieces of clay. I'm of course using the adhesive underneath so it'll stick to the plaster nicely. But basically I'm smoothing every piece with my finger first and I'm going to smooth that onto the plaster as well as the clay. And then I'm going to take the Sculpey tools and use the flexible part just to make it look even more fine-tuned, I guess. Now I'm working on filling in the hands and I made a couple caps or shoes to start sculpting the feet. I think I'm gonna make some paws because I'm planning to turn this figure into some sort of dinosaur resembling creature. Um, thank you neighbor for mowing. We love random background noise. I was inspired by this character that is actually part of the kit. It's really cute, this fruit dinosaur. I'm not gonna do the same concept, but we shall see what it turns out like. And I think that's what I'm gonna do. He kind of looks like Charmander at this point.
I added round toes to each foot and I made them as smooth as I possibly could. Then I did the same thing for the hands as I did for the feet where I just covered each of those with a wad of clay and of course used the clay adhesive underneath so it bonds to the plaster well. I'm going to just cut away a lot of this because he kind of looks like, I don't know, top heavy, kind of looks like a robot and there's way too much clay there but I think after just cutting a lot of it away and making these kind of claw-like it'll come together more. Mm -hmm. I was gonna give him some teeth with epoxy sculpt and I just did these to test it out but I think it looks absolutely ridiculous so he's gonna be toothless. <laughs> After many, many hours over quite a few days, I am now ready to bake this guy and we will add some more detail after. Yay, it survived the oven. Now it is time to paint. Got some paint in here. Don't lick it. <laughs> oh man. We will be using the paints from the kit, but first, I'm going to use my own turquoise because I don't feel like mixing it. I'm just a little bit lazy, not going to lie. But you can mix basically any color that you want with these because just, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot to choose from. But I will be using some. I'm not sure how many people know this about me, but I love thriller and horror type shows and movies. American Horror Story is one of my favorites and I kind of was inspired a little bit by the rubber man, but also I'm getting Venom vibes and I don't really watch those superhero movies very often, but it's very similar. I used resin to create the eyeballs with this mold and I am going to use the really cool UV light that comes with the kit as well. Shine that on to harden the resin. It is UV resin and it's really easy to work with. I'm happy about that. I painted a design on the back and then I sealed it with more resin and I'm going to use the sander to remove a little bit of paint so I can glue this eye to the face. Still gotta decide what I wanna do with the other eye, but for now I'm gonna paint on a little bit of gold. I think it's called the dry brush method. I saw Ace of Clay do something like this before. Um, I'm just getting the top part of the texture colored so you can see the black underneath still. Aside from the eye, there is one more thing I want to add to the design of this guy, and that is a little bit of epoxy sculpt to create some spiky shapes on the top of his head to kind of like match with the ones on the chest. Take note that I was wearing gloves while doing this because there can be a sort of reaction that some people can be allergic to. So does this look pretty even? Kind of. Mm, now I think there's too much here. I mixed equal parts of A and B together and added the little spikes down the middle of the skull to create a divide. Honestly though, the actual meaning of this piece is pretty deep. If you watched my last video, you might know what I'm talking about, but just to make it quick, this is a clay dinosaur representation of being overtaken by anxiety, negative emotions, stress, what have you. The turquoise half of the dino is your true self. You're still there even if you have these obstacles that you're trying to overcome. Whatever monster you are facing is part of you. You're still there underneath. So I hope that that gives you guys a little bit of inspiration if any of you guys are going through tough times. I love you and thank you so much for watching. No, no, no. Okay. Do not open yet. Okay.